We keep your hours with a 24-hour client support center. Welcome back to Captains of Industry. Still with me in studio is the founder of Black Like Me, Herman Mashaba. Where we're still in this interesting story. The factory is burnt down. It's arsenal. Mm. You have to pay for it out of your own money because insurance wouldn't pay anything. Mm. They paid, was it, uh, they was paid, they paid uh, the little bit, not anywhere close to, to, to really what uh, the damage was. Yeah. Was this debilitating? At, th at this point, did you want to give up? In, in fact, uh, it's no. For, for whatever reason, I got woken up at about one, two in, at night that my factory was on fire. And uh, when I got there with Connie, we immediately obviously left. When we got there, we realized there was no way we were going to save this factory. And what was actually quite sad about it was that uh, I had left uh, the factory. I was the last person to leave the previous night at 6 o'clock. The following morning, I was starting a 24-hour shift. So I'd already had meetings with everyone, and I was going to meet uh, the new shift coming at 6 o'clock. I was going to open for them. And obviously, they found me there. People were crying. And, and I joked with people, I said, you know, as you can understand, people are joke, they are, fight, they are crying, but they're not obviously crying for my factory, they're crying for their jobs. And I said, I have to really find a way to really save the situation. And you and, did? Oh yeah, no, God, I mean, I had no choice. I had to, 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 to find a way to, to, to really make a plan. And uh, within two weeks, I managed to buy a factory. Fortunate enough, in Midrand, the country was opening up. I did not really need to really get a wide nominee to really buy property anywhere. And uh, the nearest place I could buy a property was in, in, in Midrand, which was uh, like almost uh, eight, 80 k's away from my existing factory. But now, the challenge is how do you then transport people? How do you start setting up uh, the factory and so forth? That process took me almost two, two years, really using my own resources. I mean, it was actually one of the most painful part of, of, of my but life. But it was about but perseverance oh, and no, not no, giving no, up. No, I'm uh, fortunate enough, I think, uh, probably the old man upstairs always looks after me. And then you went from strength to strength. 1997, Colga Colgate Col Palmolive came in and bought out 75% of your company. That's right. And but I, it was a mistake. Not, uh, no, it was absolutely not. And uh, that's what people actually keep making that mistake. It was, it was, uh, it was definitely not really a mistake. You know, but why before, did you before, buy it before, back then? before the, the Colgate uh, the transaction, actually on the day when the, I, I had another listed company at the time that had offered to buy my, my business, and, and their offer was 17 million rands better than Colgate. But they wanted to buy the entire company and get me to go and play golf. And I was in my 30s, and I said, no, I, I'm not prepared to, to really go in and play golf. What am I going to really do with this money? So the Colgate transaction, as I said, 17 million rands cheaper. But I, I went for that because Colgate want, still wanted me to be part of the organization. And at the same time, for me, I wanted to have an opportunity to be part of a big company to really learn some of the, the corporate type of culture. But why so then did me, you go and buy yeah, back? Yeah, no. Well, then, obviously, in, in 18 months down the line, the business was really losing money. There was nothing. And that's when I offered it to Colgate to... To, to buy my 25%, then I can go and, go and do something else. And f six months later, I ended up being the one buying it back. My corporate advisor, a guy called Chain Figures, and really put together a fantastic proposal for Colgate to accept it. Why I'm saying it was not a mistake, the learning that, uh, that I had during that Colgate period, that two years. Because big Colgate, business. You got big no, no, business learning there. It really gave me the, an opportunity that uh, if, it, if I'd gone to any best a business school anywhere in the world, I would not have it because I had practical experience of really being in this environment and we're bleeding, we're losing money for two, two years. And so you can imagine. So when I came out of this marriage after the two years, that's when I, I came out, I believe, much smarter than I was prior to that. I think for me, it was, a, was obviously one way for me to really learn some of, some of the disciplines that, uh, that, that I've learned. And no one can actually take that away from me because this was not a movie, this was real. <laughs> you know, and, and Colgate were fantastic. Uh, 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 and we tried everything possible to really stop the bleeding. The bleeding wouldn't stop. <laughs> I want to fast track to Lefatsi now and where you are and your mining exposure, resource kind of environment. But I am cognizant of time because I still want to get your valuable lessons for entrepreneurs out there. I think mm. I'll be crucified by the <laughs> yeah, audience yeah. if we don't throw forward to your advice on that front. So why now? Why resources? No, not, I'm not actually. It's interesting that a lot of people are an impression that I'm in a, in a mining uh, space and not very far from that. The first, obviously, investment that I made uh, when I went into the B space, after obviously seeing that uh, government was coming out with legislation to govern black, uh, the, the black economic empowerment. So I realized with 
people without me, this is a reality. And obviously, this is happening. Oh, this is happening. Rather and, be a part and, of I, and I was having pressure every day to white uh, colleagues knocking on my dosen's hem and please let's do a deal. And uh, obviously through my corporate advisor, Shane, put me in touch. We did a deal with Mohala Alloys, which is a ferro chrome smelter. But, you know, so it's not obviously so a direct So we just jumping to conclusions yeah, no. that it's yeah, mining Yeah, it, it's elements. mining. And, and it was a fantastic. And put me in touch uh, with great colleagues that, that we put together this transaction. And, and I think it was really quite a successful uh, event for, for, for uh, thing for me. Right now, most of my investments are in financial, service, sev uh, in financial services, in, in real estate, and, and so forth. So, so you're mining, well diversified. No, no. Um, yeah, I think I've got about 14 or so different investments in, in different areas. Mining, I've, I've, I've got one small investment. It's not even really worth talking about. Unfortunately, in, 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 the, in the mining, pro probably I'm, I'm not uh, strongly politically connected to really get deals in, in that sector. So, And I'm happy to really leave it to other people. And of people. course, you're not politically um, correct, so no, it's no, going to be no, tough no, for you no, in no, that but, environment. But at the same time, you know what? This country's economy is so huge that I think it needs all of us to think about the opportunities. So obviously, where there are no opportunities, I'm not going to waste my time there. I go where there are opportunities. And I always, in my strategies, look at businesses that are small with a, with a massive op uh, growth opportunity. Those are the ones that I think, for me, they excite me. Obviously, because the big ones, then uh, funding is a, it's a challenge and so forth. So and go I, and small, I, take little startups and And grow them, take them. that cash, you know, and that's what we've really done. That's what uh, Lepaz, we're really using our own strong balance sheet to really buy the, the, the stakes, small ones. And, and grow them a few years there, later, someone throw, comes in and throw it. Uh, All right, now I know everybody in the audience is going, there's so much passion, there's so much energy in this entrepreneur. If you are looking at small businesses, how do I bring my small business to you? Oh, yeah, I mean, that, you know, that's what I do every day of my life. Look, at the moment, uh, as much as I look after my investments, but at the same time, the social issues are really driving me nuts because Honestly and truly, I spend more than 50% of my time on social issues, like the Free Market Foundation, which I actually hijacked because I, I really needed a home I could really use to really promote uh, industrial development for the, for the country. And, and I've had a long-term relationship with the Free Market Foundation, and, I'm, and, and I was fortunate enough, I was given the opportunity to lead this organization. I've put together a very strong board, but at the same time, I've got other uh, uh, social uh, projects that are run with kids all over the country with the free with the Phil Ben Foundation. Today, I just come back from uh, addressing 80 black artists. We're coming out with what we call Black Like Us, with, uh, the, the ninth one that we're running, uh, doing this with the Deutsche Bank has joined me. So. I'm all, always really running around this. I spend 50, at least 50% of my time. I want to look at this advi advice because now we've got three minutes left of the show and I've got so much still to get <laughs> from you. But if you are an entrepreneur in the current environment with all the labor legislation still hanging around your neck because you, you may change that framework. It's uh, going to take uh, a bit of time uh, to do uh, that. But, but, um, so but, while it's but being South done, Africans are going to, to realize uh, the damaging effect of this because, but, uh, because but everyone before, is going to be Before it changes, how do you think an entrepreneur should navigate the current system? And I, honestly, I cry for, for particularly the, the small entrepreneurs because they have no chance of ever starting. You know, to go out into the townships and the villages when uh, ask uh, those entrepreneurs what this labor legislation does to them. Every time they're taken to the CCMA for whatever, because people steal from you, you're angry, you, 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 you fire them without following the right process, because the guy didn't really know. Go and ask them. So I think for me, I strongly believe, and very strongly for that, for as long as we've got this legislation in, 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 in place. For, let's forget about uh, entrepreneurship, but development, but especially the small ones. The big guy, companies can, can survive because they can have lawyers, they can have HR but practitioners. But how did, you, how did you conquer everything? How did you keep yourself I, going? Because that's what everybody wants to know. No, no, I, th I, th I, th I think I survived in the past, obviously in the 80s, we did not really have uh, this uh, restrictive labor legislation. Uh, the markets were, were open. Uh, to, for people so the to environment really do was no. much more conducive oh, no. No, to much, a much, small much, business much, much, environment. Absolutely. And people supported uh, us. Uh, they worked with us in, in the development of our business. We gave people opportunities. You know, to, I always tell people, you know, in the 80s, uh, everywhere I went, people used to say, please, heaven, can you find me a job? Even if I did not have space in my business, I will always refer them to my colleagues in business. Today, I'm too scared to even talk to someone about jobs because I was taken to a CCMA because someone said I promised them a job. Someone who did not work for me. It took me three trips uh, to Polokwane to appear in, in court because uh, they wanted me to settle. Settle for what? On I have no doubt that you are going to change labor legislation in this country with the passion that you are displaying right now. We're about to end the show, and I have to ask you how you felt 
when you saw, saw yourself on the cover of Forbes Africa? In fact, it's interesting when I, mean, when I was approached by Forbes to really be on the cover. Even, uh, first, I refused. I said, whatever. I said, I can do it on condition that you guys uh, allow me to promote uh, a free market principle. I said, that's a condition not to really promote what I have accumulated myself as a person. That's, that's not beside the point. I think I want to be in a country where people are... I want to be in the same in the country where all of us are the same, if ever we can. But the only way we can achieve it is by industrial development. We're not going to, uh, to get people to be the same as I am by me giving them, because that's not really going to be the solution to this country's future. Herman, thank you so much for your time. I've been speaking to Herman Mashaba, one of South Africa's greatest entrepreneurs. We've come to the end of this week's edition of Captains of Industry. Until next time, it's goodbye and thank you for watching.